there are other ways to harvest sunlight. It's estimated that biomass, plants growing through photosynthesis, offers 11 times current human energy use. And one nation has already proven it's possible to grow your own. In the United States, for every thousand people, there are more than 800 motor vehicles, cars, trucks, and buses. If developing nations follow that path, they'll soon be close to six billion motor vehicles on the planet. And if they're burning gasoline and diesel, they'll be pumping out nearly 12 billion additional metric tons of carbon dioxide every year, assuming there's enough oil to keep them on the road. One nation doesn't have that worry. If for some magical reason, every molecule of gasoline in the world would disappear, I guess that the only country that would keep its cars running normally would be Brazil. That wasn't always true. As in every other industrialized nation, the two oil shocks of the 1970s brought gasoline shortages to Brazil. Its government, then a military dictatorship, decided to do something revolutionary. Military dictatorships are bad for many, many things, but the military dictatorship in Brazil realized that science and technology was an instrument for development, for uh, independence. In 1975, the Brazilian government created the pro-alcohol, an ethanol substituting gasoline program. I think it did it for nationalistic reasons, too, which was one of the characteristics of military regimes. Although a nuclear physicist, José Goldenberg worked with agricultural colleagues and wrote a paper for the journal Science, proposing ethanol made from sugarcane as an alternative to imported gasoline. People were quite surprised that there were options to gasoline. You know? Until that time, uh, gasoline dominated completely the picture. Producing alcohol from sugar is something that humanity has done for more than 3,000 years. So it's not really a new idea. Ethanol from sugarcane is really uh, solar energy turned into a liquid. Sugarcane proves to be the best raw material for the production of ethanol. That doesn't have to do with Brazil or nationalism or anything. It has to do with photosynthesis. Though nature may have blessed Brazil with rain and sunshine, it took high-level policy and investment for this nation to grow its own fuel supply. That took a decision from the government. So it was not only natural resources, but a deliberate attempt by the government, which created the conditions to do that. Of course, in the beginning, ethanol was expensive, and the government understood that, but everybody knows that in the beginning, technologies are expensive. Automobiles were very expensive when Ford uh, came on into the game. And more or less, it worked. For 10 years, then Brazil was the only country in the world that had automobiles that could use 100% ethanol. That required a complete distribution system for pure ethanol. And at some point, by the end of the 80s, most of the cars were pure ethanol cars. Manufacturers like GM Brazil responded and tooled up to support pure ethanol. We were selling about 97% of our cars during that period on ethanol. Then, oil prices crashed and subsidizing ethanol no longer seemed so wise. But Brazil was still a major sugar producer. Could engineering innovations find some way to build cars that could use either gasoline or ethanol? In the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, we start thinking about uh, having a car that could run with both fields. But uh, during that period, we did not have a technology sufficient to run a flex car. A new kind of dual fuel engine had already been invented in the United States back in the 1980s. But in 2003, the first mass-produced flex car, a VW Gol, rolled off production lines not in the U.S., but in Brazil. Once again, the Brazilian government, by now civilian, had stepped in. In the 2002, Brazilian government organized a an initiative for reducing taxes for the automakers if they would make flex fuel cars. 
So you see the government policy reversed and changed and still the policy worked. And once again, natural resources and human planning came together. Yeah, here at General Motors do Brasil, we are producing right now 100% of the passenger cars as a flex fuel. Now Brazilian consumers have a choice, trading off the higher cost but higher energy of a tank full of gasoline against the lower cost but lower energy of ethanol. And 95% of the automobiles sold every month in Brazil are flex fuel cars. That makes Brazil a very unique country in terms of substituting gasoline. Brazil last year used more liters of ethanol than liters of gasoline. So it's not a small experiment, it's a large experiment. Brazilian researchers claim they could expand their nation's production of biofuel 10 times over, using only abandoned farmland and underutilized pastures, while still protecting the nation's forests. Biofuels will only be a sustainable alternative, not only if they do not compete with the production of food, but also if they do not cause harm to the environment. Looking back, it may seem like a straight path from imported oil to energy independence. But the Pro-Alcool program was an on-again, off-again process before ending up with flex cars using flex fuels. What was constant was a nation focusing on its unique capabilities and natural resources, assets that inevitably vary nation by nation. For José Goldenberg, present at the creation of the push for sugarcane ethanol, the story has one main lesson. You have to adopt the solution and then have the courage to stick to it. <laughs>